What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, Bike to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. I am Nicholas. That is Dr. Jesse Morse, as always. So just to give you the situation on why we drop on Fridays instead of Thursdays sometime, uh, I travel back to New Jersey to film Fade the Public with Snacks and Animal. If I do that on Sundays, we drop that on Thursday. But if we wait till Tuesday and we drop that on Friday, this video comes out on Thursday. So just to give you a little heads up on um, why the schedule switches around sometimes. But we have Dr. Jesse Morse every Friday or every Thursday of the Fantasy Doctors here to break down the most important injuries for y'all this week. And this happens to be a very, 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 very important week for y'all because it is the semifinals of Fantasy Football Championships. Doc, what's your opinion on Week 17? Not not necessarily having a championship then because I like I, it's a horrible, horrible run league if you have your championship in Week 17. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to be putting it out, uh, putting out analysis into week 17 or is I, it I put out analysis every day into the Super Bowl. Okay, Jesus Christ, that's horrible. Thankfully there's only two teams by then, so it's like yeah, that's 2 seconds. I am so thankful that like I'm in fantasy football and not like real football because once week 16 is done, I'm like I'm out. I'm gone. I'm traveling. I'm done with football for like Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. Probably like a week. Probably like a week, and then I'm fucking diving right back in, to be honest. you got to remember that all of these injuries, at the end of the day, not only do they matter for fantasy football, but they, they are essentially matter for real football. I mean, you're making the decision. What we learn is that as the year goes on, we get much better feels of how training staffs are with their teams, how players are, and whether or not they push through and play versus someone that's really conservative and, and definitely does not play when they're even a little banged up. We'll have some teams that are, are very good with timelines and say, yeah, he's going to be back in probably three, four weeks, and he actually stick it like the Chiefs. And then we have other ones that you have no idea. Like, they don't tell you a damn thing, and you they don't know you, anything about it. Yeah, they tell you day-to-day so day, day day for the next two months. Yeah, it's like – so, I mean, you learn that. John Jackson you. is still day-to-day -day right now. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many – there's so many things. And then like, then you have to sift out like who's important, uh, which, I mean, if I listed every offensive player injury, I, I would probably have a hundred people on the list every week. Yeah. You'd have so to. I literally have to trim all the guys that, yeah, either he's not super important or he's going to play and, and I'm not really worried about it. Yeah. So that's what people ask me, like when, if they're not on the list and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm not worried. I just, I, I can't write everybody because it would literally take me an hour every day to, to, to refill this list. Yeah. So and as today, it is, it takes me all a while. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, you literally have to stop being a doctor if you wanted to focus full time on every injury that happened in the NFL, because there are a lot of them. But today we're going to focus on just the very, very, very important ones, the ones who are maybe questionable, the ones who will be in your lineups. And we are filming this on Thursday. It's 4.35 right now uh so we have not seen thursday night football so obviously we won't be covering lamar jackson and the guys in that game i will say though if you have lamar jackson and you don't play him you didn't you didn't play him last night you're a fish because i'm assuming he went off for like 38 points because the ravens probably won by 38 points um, so here, here, here's actually a, the, the question i've been answering on twitter a lot today they said all right are you concerned about lamar's quad i said no not really you're going to talk about the game the score but, the but but the, but here's the problem quads are notorious for retweaking remember someone in the early in the year retweaked their quad i forgot who ty or somebody and then you have to think about game script they're facing an awful jets team that is going to get rolled they're going to be without jamal adams they're going to be without like two of their defensive their top defensive like quinn williams ryan griffin is on ir now like they, they lost a ton of their people so like demaris thomas can be out like they literally don't have anybody so i fully expect the ravens to roll so when you get down to that and you need every point you can accumulate for semifinals week or some people's maybe finals week, you can't really risk only scoring 20 points. I know you're, you're, you're spoiled and getting used to getting 30 or, or, or whatever. Who are you Lamar, scoring over Lamar Jackson this week? But the problem is if they're up 30 points in the middle of the third quarter, RG3 is coming in. It's over. They already said today – the but if they're, up, if they're up 30, they, that's because Lamar Jackson probably scored 30. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. What if uh, Ingram scores three touchdowns? Sure. That could happen. Well, I mean, uh, uh, here's a good question for you. How many 300-plus yard games has Lamar Jackson thrown this season? It doesn't matter about how he throws. It's fantasy. We only care about running. No, I know, but that's a, that's a bonus. I would, so. I would say uh, maybe – I would say two maximum. I want to go closer to one, though. 
Correct. One. Okay. I was going to, was it that? But obviously he's a monster because so he's about to break Michael Vick's record yeah, break it tonight for most rushing yards ever by a QB in a, in a season over a thousand fifty or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, but, but my problem is a, if he tweaks his quad, okay, that is what it is. But if they pull him at halftime and he gets you 20 points, great. I'm happy with 20 points. Okay. Right. But what if you have Watson? What if you have Jimmy G? Yeah. What if you happen to have Tannehill, which is very possible, and Tannehill drops 35 or whatever in a shootout with Watson? You just lost 15 points that you potentially knew you could have had. That is a relatively safe bet. So yeah. I understand if you want to play conservative, if you're expected to monster kill your matchup, then start Lamar. If you need to be bold, there's a couple guys I may consider starting over Lamar because I feel like their ceiling is higher this week because of those situations, circumstances. That's all I'm saying. I I get what you're saying. There is there is Lamar Jackson my QB one in the rankings. There are definitely a lot of risks and red flags about it, but I almost feel like it's like it's like the LeBron meme. You know, when he's smoking a cigarette, it's like it's it's like New York Jets, New York Giants. It's like the Monstars. It's like fucking Lamar Jackson for 30 fantasy points. So I mean, I wish it was more competitive because then I know he's going to be in the game. Yeah. Okay. Let's pivot off this because this is, you know, people have already seen the game anyways, and we already probably sounded really dumb or we sounded really smart one way or another. There are some other quarterbacks uh, out there that are dealing with some injuries. Now we have Patrick Mahomes with a bruised hand. He should be ready to go, correct? He should be fine. Yeah, I'm not overly worried about Mahomes. Was it on his throwing hand? Yes, he, he bruised it. The fret injury uh, x-rays were negative. He, he struggled with some long passes, so he was kind of keeping them short, which is why Tyreek got a ton of short stuff last week. I'm not concerned about Mahomes' hand. They just ha- He just hasn't really scored a ton of points this year. Yeah, I was looking. Uh, like, uh, he's uh, had I think like he's gone over. Seven under 20 or something like that. Like, he just hasn't gone bananas this year. Yeah, I don't think he's gone over 20 fantasy. He's gone over 20 fantasy points, I think, once in the last, like, since week seven or something like that, yeah. six, which is – Super disappointing, but I mean, as, as long as he's healthy, I'm very hard to yeah. not roll him out there this week. But someone else who has a dealing with an injury on their on their hand, their throwing hand, that mm-hmm. is a concern because while uh, Patrick Mahomes is practicing and he should be fine, Jameis Winston's at practice throwing tennis balls, which tells you he is very very far off from 100. percent And he's going to be without Mike Evans, his top receiver, or arguably his top receiver up there with Chris Godwin. Both of those facts combined. Uh, I, I've been starting him in one of my super flex leagues all year. I luckily have Tannehill as my quarterback three. So I will, with, with, with no hesitation, I will be starting Tannehill over Winston this week. I think it drops Tan, uh, Winston back from, you know, the QB five or six range, not like a, out of startable contention. I think there's a good chance he doesn't play. I think they, they, there's a good chance they play Ryan Griffin. Uh, if not, James Winston probably drops to the 10 to 12 range for me because he's dealing with lack of weapons as well as um, the hand, right? I put out my list this morning before it was any news about the tennis ball. And then like an hour later, I saw that. I'm like, yeah, I had him at 100%. Now I'm like 80%, maybe less. Yeah. So if he practices in full tomorrow with a regular football, I'm not worried. He does okay. If he still can't hold the football, I'm starting to get concerned. Yeah. Uh, this is going to – it may not tank Godwin's value, but this is going to affect it. Uh, Here's Watson, the thing, if he if he – can squeeze a football, right? You could squeeze a football, but I would assume what that's going to affect the most is his long ball. And he's a guy who racks up yards because he's completing 40 or 50 yard passes weekly. So, you know, even if he can throw the football and he's in the game, I'm concerned that, you know, that 375 yards drops down to 275 yards. And when you're throwing two to three picks a game, maybe you can't hold on to the ball. Maybe that causes him to fumble it once or twice throughout the game. Like, I think a lot of these things kind of add up quickly. And it just, it, there's a lot of, I mean, I can see, I mean, if you have him and you don't have any better options, like I do in some of these, it's like, all right, well then. Yeah. He's not on the start. Roll the dice, you know, yeah, but um, you remember he has a fracture on in his thumb, on his thumb. So uh, there's not many fractures that you can play with. Uh, let's yeah. put it that way. So the fact that they're able to play with it means it's really small, but the thumb is really, really important. You saw how long Drew Brees was out. I mean, that was a ligament, but same difference. Be careful with I, as much as I want to just say blindly go Winston. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. The, the the parting words on that, like I said, he's he's not unstartable. But if you have anything within like the top eleven or twelve options, I would probably roll elsewhere. I'd even would you throw uh, Baker Mayfield against Arizona over Winston? I think I would at this point. Arizona has been like historically bad against quarterbacks this year. I was just listening to a pod and I think it was literally like Arizona since 2000 is letting up the most fantasy points per game to the quarterback position this year. 
of, of the mean, last twenty years. I could justify it. I think Landry is going to be a good play. I think Chubb is going to have a monster game. But I could be convinced. I mean, I, I thankfully I don't have to make the decision until Sunday. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll move down. Uh, are there any other quarterbacks that we really need to worry about? Uh, Dak, I'm not worried. Haskins will affect F1. Um, I don't know if he's going to play. Brady's going to be fine. That would be, that would be fucking fantastic if he doesn't play for Terry McLaurin. Yeah. Case Keenum back in there. Oh, my God. That, 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 that's the difference. So we have to monitor that one. Stafford, as we know, is pretty much out for the rest of the year. They're just messing with the – Yeah, let's the, move on to, to the running backs. Fuck it. Yeah, right. yeah, Daniel Derek, Jones is probably going to be out this week, so don't worry about it. Yeah, Derrick Henry, dealing with a hamstring injury two weeks ago, comes into this game, was limited practice all week, comes in, goes nuts. Uh, I believe he comes out of the game, and then they don't put him in the game at the end because they're blowing him out. Now, he's been limited at practice all week, if not not practicing, uh, but they said he's going to be ready to roll on Sunday. Like, are we predicting him to be in and out of the game? Because this is obviously not a good injury to be dealing with at this point in the season. Um, and we saw him already so, being affected by it last week, although he was putting up numbers prior to it. So it's like, eh. I, I, I feel like they're being really smart with him, and I think this is a good idea. Okay. Um, these injuries, this is the hamstring. Hamstrings love to re-injure very easily. So I, I'm not overly concerned about him. But if you told me he played in the game and tweaked it again, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not at all. At the same time, if you look at his data in like November and December, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. it's no unbelievable. Wants, no one wants to tackle his fat ass. It's huge. Like, the guy's a, a bowling ball. He's like, reminds me of Mojo, but a bigger version of him. Yeah, he's um, going on four straight games of 100 rushing yards. Right now, he's at about 1,450 total yards from scrimmage and 15 touchdowns, 15 total touchdowns on the year. So this is not the time you want to be playing against Derrick Henry. Uh, your only hope is that he does re-aggravate that hamstring right now. But in terms of, like, confidence level, I mean, you're, there's no way you're sitting in the you have to You have to start him. You have 100%. The, my, my biggest pause is in DFS because I play for only DraftKings, and he doesn't catch any balls. So he's yeah. pretty high risk when you know you're not going to catch any balls, and you're pretty dependent. But if you're in season long – you have to play this guy and just hope that he doesn't re-aggravate it. There's no question. Yeah, Houston's also better against the run than they are against the pass, so I'd imagine they kind of shift the game plan that way, maybe not use Henry as much. Uh, but, yeah, the, the only concern I would have for him is is in DFS. Now let's talk about another guy that you would love to have in your lineup, but you hope that he's at anywhere near 100%, which he's obviously not. But Josh Jacobs, man, there's a lot of rumors swirling around with Josh Jacobs. And I've seen a lot of the stuff that you've put out on Twitter, and I'm completely with you in the fact that I would be surprised if he suited up. Um, but all the reports out of Oakland are that, you know, the, the MRIs or whatever came out fine. John Gruden, it wasn't like John Gruden came out and was like, yeah, he's our starter, he's our guy, as long as he's uh, feeling good, we'll roll him out there. But he did participate in practice the last couple of days. So right now it seems like it's kind of a coin flip. Like if I'm going against the Jacobs owner – I almost want him to be active because I don't think Jacobs is either going to make it through the game or give or get that like Jacobs workload that we were used to in the beginning of the year. You know, here's the issue with this. And I, and I, and I recorded the podcast on this, even though, or a, a video on this, even though we didn't have the full details at that time. And now we do. And it's, it's basically a, a, a likely an avulsion fracture off of his shoulder blade, which is not a very common injury. The fact that they got an MRI and said, yeah, it looks okay. Let's potentially put him back in. For what? What are you playing for? Yeah. Uh, records? Like, yard accumulation? I mean, this is your stud rookie. He's obviously a stud. There's no question about that. I just – I don't like it. I think they should sit him. They may not, but – and, and part of me says, you know, uh, if he's on the field, you have to start him. If he um, is active, he's probably going to be closer to a low-end RB2 for me. I'm not as – Better as options. Specific. Yeah, there's a lot of better options. I think there's guys like Raheem Mostert that, that I would start over, Josh Jacobs. There's a lot of middling guys like that. Where do you draft Josh Jacobs next year in redraft? He's top 15 for me. Yeah, he I was top uh, 20 for me this year. I mean, in terms of my rankings, I didn't draft him that high. But That's going to be a great debate, I think, next year. People I mean, uh, if you're, I play in predominantly full PPR league, so that kills him. Yeah, like, exactly. He doesn't catch balls. But that's what we said about Derrick Henry. And he's like the RB4 or whatever right now. So it's like – yeah, but Jacobs doesn't have that breakaway speed that Henry has. That's the difference between the two of them. Yeah, back to back to the injuries and stuff. So yeah, I mean, you'll have to keep a close eye on the reports. I'm I will I mean, obviously you can get my rankings on Patreon, patreon.com slash BGE, but I'll let you know right now if he is active, he'll probably be closer to like a back end RB two than, you know, the top ten RB that he would be healthy in this smash matchup against the uh 
against the Jaguars. Staying within the position, like we could talk about Devontae Freeman, who's just not really a good running back anymore. Now he's missing practice with an ankle. Um, and they play against the 49ers, which is obviously, I mean, they're not as great as they've been, and they're going to be without a lot of players on the defensive side of the ball. Richard Sherman, uh, D4, they're already without Quan Alexander. So they're not anywhere near full strength, but definitely not a plus matchup for running backs either way. I don't know. Like, What, what are your thoughts on him? I thought I saw it was a knee. Uh, but either way, he definitely said, oh, he didn't practice Wednesday. Like, oh, then maybe a rest day. And then we heard it was his knee, and it still could have been a rest it, day. It, you're right, you're right. It was his knee. Not his but, but, but here's the problem. He hasn't been – very good. I mean, he has been awful. Okay. And and this was my concern with him is that he's got a lot of wear and tear in those tires. Like Blavion Bell, he's been okay, but he hasn't been amazing. And you kind of need him to be amazing right now. So yeah. at best, he's a flex to me, especially yeah. if that defense, even though they got toasted last week, but you know. It's an interesting, it's an interesting play here because I think Freeman is I think he is not a good running back at this point in his career. I think that a lot of the dump offs and garbage time uh, receptions he's kind of racked up has made him a good enough fantasy player that you can put him in your lineup. But when you're looking at in terms of like what he used to be right now, he has three breakaway runs on the year, which is 15 plus uh, yard carries his 2.1% breakaway run rates. Only 2% of his runs go for breakaway runs is 44th among running backs His evaded tackles is 45th among running backs. So he's, he's not good whatsoever. But the, if the Falcons feed him, then he could put up those RB2 numbers for you. Uh, he's another guy that's like clearly less than 100% right now. He doesn't have the explosion. So it's like, you know, do you feel confident? No, but you might have to throw him in. I think he's probably going to be close to that back end RB2 range for me too. Probably more of like an RB3. I think yeah no I got you I got you I mean I thankfully I don't have this predicament he's a he's a flex for me okay I think the only other running back that we really need to get into I mean we could talk about Dalvin Cook but he's been practicing in full Alexander Madison is the one missing time so I'm you know obviously Dalvin Cook is top three running back option this week James Conner is supposed to return this week they also have injuries in their backfield Jalen Samuels is missing practice so he might be a a scratch for this week as well which gives James Mm -hmm. Conner you know the workload that he left the Steelers with uh, a month or so ago. Do you think he'll be close to 100% when he gets back on the field? And do you, do you think he takes over that workload that he had? So I am still adamant that he needs surgery. That doesn't mean he can't play. That just means that it's going to take one hit and he's going to have some bad pain. I still think he has a pretty significant shoulder sprain in, in, in the ligaments that are trying to heal, which they don't really heal, they scar, but they're just not the bone. The, the the bones are so far apart that he needs surgery to bring them back together. Um, and 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 because of the position and their rankings and 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 they're trying to make the playoffs, he's trying to make do. I have him in a couple leagues, and I'm going to start him if he's active because he has potential. But man, he is one hit away from re-aggravating this shoulder all over again. I think I'll feel pretty confident with him. I, I think the Buffalo run defense is obviously not up to par with their pass defense. So in terms of matchup, I wouldn't be too uh, nervous about it. But yeah, like you said, the re-injury risk is obviously there, as it is with any of these players who are going into games injured. So, I mean, take that with a, with a grain of salt as much as you can. But he's given his, his shoulder some time to rest, so hopefully he feels a lot better than he did a couple weeks ago. Um, James Conner will definitely be in the RB2, probably closer to the high-end RB2 spectrum for me. Maybe if Jalen Samuels was active, it would maybe scale his workload back a little bit in the pass catching aspect of things. But I think he kind of goes in there and just toughs it through for the rest of the season to try to get them into the, uh, I agree. I think that's what, I think that's what they, and if, if they were out, he'd be done. He'd probably already have surgery by now. Yeah. hundred percent. So let's move over to the wide receivers. Um, anyone that we think is actually going to possibly miss this game. I think the first one on, on my mind is Adam Thielen. Cause I know I'm, I, I think I'm either playing against him or possibly starting him in almost every league I'm in. I have four four semifinals matchups this weekend. And Thielen is someone I want to get. Like, I, I need you to convince me not to play him. Because Thielen is a guy that I want to – I think it's a fantastic matchup because they're going against the Chargers. And we know um, Casey Hayward is locked down. And he'll probably be on digs, which leaves the middle of the field wide open for Adam Thielen. And that's usually – those games when digs is locked down by a top cornerback are the ones that Thielen usually explodes in. But Thielen already pushed himself too early once, re-injured it, was out for the last few weeks. Now I'm like, fuck, man, I, I don't know what to do with Thielen. Because for me, it's like Thielen, I think the decision I'll have to make is Thielen or Cortland Sutton. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, Cortland Sutton's been great. But we haven't seen, you know, besides those two touchdowns he scored a couple of weeks ago, like Drew Locke has not been able to throw the ball outside. He's put up some big numbers, but he's not consistently. He doesn't throw it down the field. 
Exactly, and that's where Cortland Sutton was making so many splash yeah, plays. Why he hasn't been very good? Like a souped-up fucking Marvin Jones at this point, making plays downfield, making plays in the red zone, and now I'm like, and Kansas City's been like, people don't understand they've been locked down against opposing wide receivers. They let up points otherwise, but wide receivers struggle against them. So, so my question, I guess, is like, I'm looking at Adam Thielen, I'm looking at Cortland Sutton. Like, how confident are you throwing Adam Thielen into your lineup this week? So he's one of those guys that I kind of spoke at the beginning, and it's like he's not going to dilly-dally and lead and come back early. He's yeah. the type that will only come back when he's ready. So I feel pretty confident that if he's starting, if he's active, yeah, he's good. Is there a risk for re-injury? Yes. Hamstrings are notorious for re-injury, and there's nothing he can do about it. So if he's on the field, he's a wide receiver, too, with one upside. There's a couple other guys that have already been ruled out that yeah. I just need to briefly mention. Alshon Jeffrey tore his Liz Frank ligament and maybe even fractured a bone he's done for the year and needs surgery. Uh, Calvin Ridley suffered some type of abdominal injury. He's done. Marvin Jones, I think it was his ankle. He's done. Mike Evans is definitely out this week and may likely next week, week 17. He may be back, but it's a moot point at that, at that point. And he Chark is pretty much out. GJ Chark is pretty much ruled out. Uh, in my opinion, they added someone from the practice squad today. That was a wide receiver. That's not a good look. Yeah, Auden yeah. Tate sprained his MCL. He's done. Paris Campbell broke his foot, he's done, and we haven't heard anything from A.J. Green. So though everybody else has a possible to play, but those guys I've ruled out are pretty much already. I'm not worried about Edelman. I'm not worried about Julio. I'm not worried about Amari. There's a couple guys that uh, are on the fence that I'm a little concerned about. The, we won't find out about any of the concussion guys until tomorrow. So Devontae Parker, Albert Wilson, Vance McDonald, all those guys, I can't tell you anything until uh, – the, the protocol usually clears around in the, sometime on Friday afternoon, five days after the injury. If it's a, Let me ask you something. With the concussions, mm -hmm. uh, does a concussion, a player suffers a concussion, they get cleared for the game, they're in the game. Would that affect their play at all from a physical standpoint? That's a good Would it question. be like a mental thing transferring so, over to a physical? Mm -hmm. This is kind of a slippery slope. Okay, so uh, – Technically, it should not. In order to clear them to return, they should have no headache, no dizziness, no balance issues, full memory uh, recognition and recall. And the most important one is fatigue. Fatigue is the last one to come back. So if you are still fatigued, and they're being honest because it's a lot of this is, 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 is right. patient driven, then technically they shouldn't be cleared if their fatigue is still bad. If they if their fatigue is not there and they don't they say I'm I, I'm I fine I feel good and they prove it. I'm not really worried. Are they at increased risk for re for re concussion? 100. There's no question. There's, the data is very strong about that. But once they've been cleared, my risk for them is is much lower. Unless you're talking about like a Brandon Cooks or somebody who's had so many that the guy's like a walking injury. Uh, let me let me ask you. I'm actually super curious about this, and I'm sure no one in my audience really knows. And I, I'm not even sure if you know exactly what the protocol is but what does a player go through in the concussion protocol like what what exactly oh, yeah, i've done this a bunch of times okay uh, so what tests so do they go through through the course of the week each day your goal is to increase your heart rate after a day or two of rest increase your heart rate as long as your symptoms don't worsen with your increased heart rate you can progress to the next stage there's five stages technically a, a stage is one day a minimum of one day okay. if you have re-injury or re-symptoms new symptoms you have to stop and go back to the uh, previous stage. So if, you, if you're on day four, uh, you start getting symptoms in that. You have to like wait 24 hours and then you try day four again. Each day is a little bit more. Day three, they start doing some light jogging, some um, simple maneuvers. Day four, they do for more football specific uh, stuff. Day five, they don't always hit, but pretty much they need to get hit uh, and see if they have any new symptoms. If they have any new symptoms at any point in time, they need to stop like like you're playing Monopoly. Stop, do not pass go. You gotta go back and then reevaluate and wait. What about, what about in game? Like when a player comes out because they want to test them for concussion. Like my dumbass is sitting here, like they're they're probably doing this in the in the locker room. Like you that is part of it. They do uh, that's one of the tests. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, we do some balance testing. We do some uh, nose to, to eye where they where they have some vision issues. Uh, I do a lot of uh, with their eyes closed balance testing. I do some memory recall, some strength testing, which usually is not very effective for these guys. It helps when you know the patient because then you can kind of get it. Yeah, he's, this dude's not right. If you don't know him, it's, it's a little harder sometimes. 
And Got sometimes it. they just give you this, this, this gaze. You're like, and you look at him like, yeah, this dude's not, you can tell he's just not, he's not with it right now. Okay. And sometimes you can send him back in and tomorrow he ends up having more symptoms. A true concussion protocol takes about five to 10 minutes to clear. Like, 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 like a good eight minutes, I would say. Before eight minutes, they're really not doing all the tests they should do. And after eight minutes, usually means they're probably not coming back because they're definitely showing signs. And the worst thing you could do is send a patient back, or I call him patient, but an athlete back onto the field after they suffered a concussion before they've had a chance to clear it. Because those are the scary ones where they re, uh, they suffer a new head injury, a new hit. Their brain immediately swells, your brain stem actually. It goes into the, the actual skull and that's how they die. It's called second impact syndrome. So very, very scary. That's why when we hear concussion, you automatically boom done you can't you're done for the day it's too risky so to like when a player goes off the field and you're like you know, oh you know it's possible concussion and you don't see him on the sideline for like 15 minutes or so you know that he's he's gone he's, he's oh gone. yeah when i see someone and i say and i say they rule out concussion nine out of ten times they're done okay gotcha every uh, once in a while like yeah they got lucky yeah because it happens like d hop took a big hit like oh yeah week or so last week or two weeks ago yeah it got him in the tent and i was like fuck he's out for the rest of the game came back in so yeah. thank you for that i want to circle real quick back onto those guys you mentioned obviously this won't affect redraft because these guys were out for the year was there anyone on that list um based on the injury that they had any of them mike evans marvin jones calvin ridley alshon paris campbell any of them that we should expect their surgeries to you know like obviously if there's like an acl tear or an achilles rupture or whatever which is i guess what alshon jeffrey kind of had uh, what but we thought we, that's what I thought it initially was. If anyone is concerning, it's two players: Rashad Penny uh, from his ACL, okay, and right. Sean Jeffrey from his Liz Frank. Okay, uh, he may have enough time to clear it. It's going to be close. Paris Campbell with the broken foot. Okay. Yeah, most of the time, uh, we don't know the details on it, but I'm not overly concerned. I had three patients with broken feet today. Not overly concerning. Most of the time, they heal in four or six weeks. Okay. Um, and the rest of the list, it seems like it was all kind of concussion related or guys you said you weren't too worried about. Juju Smith Schuster, just to note, not that you should ever be starting him at this point, but he did leave practice again today. So I would assume he's probably going to be done for the year. So obviously don't start him. T.Y. Hilton, I'd be surprised again if they put him back into the lineup at any point this year. The other one I do want to talk about is Odell Beckham Jr. You know, we comes out yeah. and we hear that he's going to need sports hernia surgery in the offseason. Yep. What does that mean in terms of – obviously, he was a massive bust this year uh, based on where we drafted him in, in places, right? Killed me, yeah. Was this sports hernia surgery the reason why he didn't play well, or is this something that you could play effectively through? And what kind of timeline are we looking at during the offseason when he does have the surgery? This is one of those where you're never going to get a straight answer, and he may not even be able to answer it honestly to you himself. Sports hernia surgeries do impact you 100%. There's no question. How much is is, is probably a better question, and I don't think there's a good answer. He says he, he suffered it sometime in, like, preseason. So, technically, he's been dealing with it. To me, it's an excuse. It sounds okay. like it to me too. He hasn't missed any. He hasn't missed a single That's game. That's what I'm saying. Like you can't just say at the end of the year, "Oh, I've had a sports hernia the whole year." Like you can, but now uh, it's hard to. Like Deshaun Jackson had one what week one or week two, whatever it was, and he struggled every week mm -hmm. to try to come back, and then he finally came back and they left. So here's the thing: Kareem Hunt had sports hernia surgery in like week one or two, and he came back in what whatever week ten or whatever it was, and he was fine. Okay. So that's what we're looking at for Odell. So uh, traditionally, uh, I'd say four to six weeks. Okay. And after that, you're good. You don't worry about it. it is, you, you just don't worry about it. But before you have the surgery, you're never the same. You, you can't. Twisting is the biggest issue. They, they, they can't. This, this motion is very uncomfortable and they lose some explosiveness and flexibility that they can't get back without surgery. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a feel for like when people next year start analyzing Odell for fantasy, are they just going to be like, oh, he's played with the sports hernia surgery. So just completely right off this year. Like where, where do you think me and my friends were talking about this a couple of days ago? We think Odell will probably like I'm not going to really look at him until assuming he's still in Cleveland. It's still Baker. You know, that whole situation is there. I'm thinking early, like third round is probably about right where you need to pick him. I, I think yeah, we need to stop falling back on the, oh, he's an elite talent and he could, the ceiling is there. But it's like, at some point you have to consider the floor as well. You know, if you, if you fall into that trap that he's going to bounce back, you're going to make the same assumption you did for Juju this year, which obviously did not pan out. Let's move over to the tight end. So we have Mark Andrews who played last night. Uh, he's moved back a little bit for me because they are using some terminology like should give it a go. So that always scares me, but again, irrelevant because you guys are watching. I'm not really worried. He, he uh, sounds like a bruise. 
Yeah, Jared Cook, Greg Olson, Vance McDonald, all dealing with concussions. So Jared right. Cook did get a limited practice in today, which tells you he's definitely moving in the right direction. So fire him up if he is on the field. He's probably on day four of progress. So he needs to clear tomorrow on day five, and he'll be good. What do we know about Noah Fant, this foot? So what we've noticed about Fant is that, first of all, the kid can catch and run. There's no question about that. But he's really boomer bust. And then in addition, he's got – I think I want to say it's a foot. I don't even know if I've seen any specifics. Yeah, he was sidelined for yesterday's practice with a foot. So I'm, I just got a bad feeling he's not going to play. I haven't heard any promising news for him. So I just don't think he's going to play this week. This is an interesting week. That game is interesting to me, right, because I, I do want to play Sutton, and that makes me be like, oh, the targets are going to go to Sutton. But, again – different parts of the field where they target them. I think this is a big, big upgrade. One of my, my – probably my favorite streaming defense of the week is Kansas City against his Denver team mm. through lock. I think he's eventually – he's got to have his rookie game eventually and without one of his favorite targets and Noah Fan, who's making plays for him after the catch. You know what I mean? Like, that's going to take away a lot of his yardage. So, uh, I like KC streaming defense. I like him even more if Noah Fan is out. Um, and then I would say lastly on this list would probably be Evan Ingram. Yeah, um, you have concerns with Ingram coming back from multi-week injuries and you and me behind the scenes kind of looked at some of the games and more often than not throughout his career when he has multi-week absences the the game that he comes back and he does not play well Ingram has been out for a while I don't know if they're going to end up pushing him this year or just you know just keep saying he's a game time decision and then not play him I don't really know what's going on there was initial rumblings that he may play last week Obviously, ruled out. I know it was Saturday, whatever day it was. He's dealing with a Liz Frank, whether or not they want to tell us it's a Liz Frank. Like Pam, who struggled for most of the season with a, with a thing until they basically mercifully killed him and put him on IR. In my head, Evan Ingram is done for the year. Could he come back? Yeah. Do I trust him? No. I mean, I love his upside, but man, I just don't trust him. I have him at 20% right now, to give you an idea. Like, I have no, I have very limited faith in, in, in Ingram this week. So if he is active, though, they're home against the Dolphins. You're not going to put him in your lineup? No, that's the problem. It's like, would you rather have Gazeki? Uh, would you rather have Henry? Would you? I mean, you're going to probably start Kittle and Kelsey over him anyway. Would, would you rather have uh, guys, you Ian mean. Thomas? Who? Ian Thomas. Ian Thomas? Yeah, I'd probably start Ian Thomas over I'm, I'm with you. Like, Ingram is probably not going to be in my lineup even if he is active. Maybe. I mean, I want him. I, I love his upside, but he's just so risky to me. If we see him play this week and he gets, you know, 60% of the snaps, I feel good about playing him next week when they play yeah, against Yeah, I agree. This week, I think, is, is definitely, yeah, like you said, a little bit risky. Look elsewhere if you do have other options, I'm sure. You know, tight end's interesting because everyone kind of sucks at tight end, but at the same time, there's always a lot of streaming options that you can kind of choose from. This year in particular has been uh, an interesting year from streamers because for the last couple of years, it seems like you either have the top guys or all you have are like the boomer, but like tight end dependent guys like the Jimmy Graham, the Jason Wittens. This year, at least we've had some like athletic kind of breakouts that you can throw into your lineup from week to week. So um, it's been a little bit trickier, but more – opportunist to kind of move around the waiver wire when it comes to tight ends. But yeah, I think uh, that's probably where you need to look if you do have Evan Ingram in your lineup and that will wrap up today's show as always. Thank you, Dr. Morse. Make sure you are following him on Twitter. Make sure you're following myself on Twitter and subscribe to the channel. If you are new, we will hopefully help y'all bring home the hardware this year and good luck in your semifinals. Smash that thumbs up button. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it informational, uh, and that is all we have for you today. So thank you for uh, hanging out with us.